I guess that question is really what we will focus on today. Who do you say I am? It's a simple question, but really it's a life-changing question. Maybe some of you have experienced being asked a life-changing question. I was thinking about that the other day. What's a life-changing question that really changed my life? I believe it was when Pam said yes. Will you marry me? Right? It was a life-changing question. But more than the questions that we ask, this is a life-changing question because it is Jesus who asks the question. Do you know that if you go through the uh, biblical context of this text, you will understand that going to a place called uh, Caesarea Philippi, they actually had to travel around almost 50 kilometers just for Jesus to ask that question. Why would Jesus ask that question? That he would actually ask his disciples and go to a far place rest there for a while and say who do you say i am you have to understand this question actually changed it was a very pivotal moment of the life of jesus it was already on his third year of ministry and when he asked this question and when he got the answer that he was waiting for things changed in his ministry after this he was more vocal about the coming death that would happen that he would be uh, bruised and hurt and killed and the next after three days be resurrected again right after this the transfiguration happened when jesus met with elijah and moses you remember that part and so he was transfigured and after this he was teaching that the, uh, the about the commands of the kingdom the greatest in the kingdom and so it was a very pivotal moment in the ministry of jesus that's why he asked this question. And as he asks this question to the disciples, I believe we also have to answer that question. And so as a guide, we're going to answer three questions today. If you guys are ready, I hope you guys take notes as well as you copy the verses that we have. We are at Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, and we will end at verse 19. Three questions that we want to answer today. Number one, who is Jesus? Just like how he asked it, who do you say I am? Number two, what is a church? As Jesus talks about building a church. And the last question that I want to ask is, what is a church called to do? Who is Jesus? Who do people say the Son of Man is? This is the start of the conversation. Jesus asks his disciple, so what do you hear about me? Who do they say I am? And I like that because he wanted to get first the popular perspective or the general public perspective of who he was. And the Bible says this is what they say about him, that he is John the Baptist, resurrected. Why? You have to understand John the Baptist was someone who preached the coming of the kingdom. The message that John the Baptist was preaching was summarized with this, repent and be baptized for the kingdom of God is at hand. And this was the same message of Jesus when he started his ministry. And so he was being compared to John the Baptist. Maybe he is like John the Baptist. Another said he was like Elijah by showing powers that not only a regular person can do. Elijah is, as we know, a prophet. He would be able to feed thousands. Jesus was able to feed 5,000 counting only men and so there were more, more imagine no he asked the person can i reach the regular yam and then again five thousand yung regular alam mo if there's one miracle that i would want in my life that if i would be given a miracle to do i believe it's multiplying food no isipin niyo no meron lang isang nagbigay ng yabu tas mapapakain ko kay lahat gusto niyo ba yon di ba parang after church lord bless this food ganun and so he was being compared to Elijah, and he was also being compared in our text. It says, Jeremiah the prophet. Why? Because as we know, Jeremiah was the emotional one, the weeping prophet. And we know this, that Jesus' ministry for the past three years was all about compassion. That even at his point of desperation or really being sad, he actually was compassionate to the people. But this might be a good perspective of Jesus. Maganda naman yung sinabi ng popular uh, general public. It was good. It was people of God, prophets of the olden times. But you know what? I want to say this. Jesus is nothing compared to them. He is much more. And he's the only one who can truly satisfy. 
What was the big issue about the, pop, the perspective of the people? That he was only a prophet. What was the perspective? What is the big gap in that perspective? He's like Elijah, John the Baptist, or Jeremiah. I believe we as people of God near to hear, need to hear this. Because even our Muslim brothers know Jesus as a prophet. If you go through their Quran, you will see that he is Isa al Masi in the Quran, in their Bible. So they know him and acknowledge him as a prophet. But I hope we get this by now that Jesus is not defined by others' perspective, especially those who really don't know him. Jesus is defined by who he is to his disciples. Tap the person to your right. Say, You are a follower of Jesus. Tap the person to your left. Tell that person, therefore, you are a disciple. Tap the person to your right again. Say, sa kanya, wake up. No? It's not about public opinion. And that's why he focuses on this great question. Why? Because even today, when you ask people who don't follow Jesus who Jesus is, I'm sure they will say something good about him. Galing yun, inspiring. I follow his TikTok. I like his dance. It's very inspiring. He's a good teacher. Some would say, yeah, he's, uh, they say that he is a provider. But I'd like that you see the text today that if we can pull that up, Jesus focuses now on this most important question I believe that he asked his disciples. Who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? Who is Jesus? When Jason was, um, when Jason was sharing about purpose last day, he asked, who, do you, who is Jesus for you? And so people blurted out so many words, different words. Some said he was a healer. Some said he was a provider, a carpenter. That might all be true, but he is more than that. Our answer to this question really reveals our faith. If you are able to answer, and I want to say this, who is Jesus for us is not a trick question. We have to really know the answer to this. Our answer to this question reveals not only our faith, but the way we live our lives. Imagine that. It has a direct effect in our lives. And so if, oh, if Jesus, imagine, if Jesus is only a good teacher, you won't go to him for healing. If Jesus was only a healer and so you don't go to him for provision, we need to understand who Jesus really is. And this is Peter's confession. Peter said, you are the Christ, not one of the. You are the Christ and the son of the living God. Wow. It was a revelation. If you look at the Bible, it says the confession of Peter. It's something that he confessed. It's something that he declared. Jesus is the son of the living God, the Christ. And as we know, the Christ means the Savior, the anointed one, the Messiah. One of the biggest revelations that people received or the disciples received was not based on what people said, but based on a revelation of the Father. What Jesus was waiting for this answer is for them to understand and for them to get this, that Jesus is the Son of God. I want to say this. If Jesus is the Son of God, you have to understand, Jesus is also God. You know, Jesus told them not to tell a lot of people about this revelation because they were not ready. And this is true because when he was crucified, the reason that they crucified Jesus was because of this truth. They could not accept that he is God. They denied the fact that he is God. And so they said, crucify him. Imagine this. They were waiting for a political king. That as they entered the city, they were saying, holy, holy, Hosanna in the highest, right? They were shouting, ito na ang king na parating. The king that will overthrow FPJ. The king of kings. He is coming. But unfortunately, it was not what they were expecting. The son of man is also the son of God. 
And so they crucified him because of the fact that they could not accept who Jesus is. For us, it's something that we should always know. And so who is Jesus for us? Think about that. Make that be a very personal reflective question today. And I want to say this, if there's something that I want you to take home today in this question, it's this. Who do you say I am? The most, the most personal and honest question, an honest answer would be this. Are you ready? Are you ready for the answer of who Jesus really is? Thank you, Ate Emmy, that you are ready. Well, give them time. Lord, make them ready. This is the answer to that great question. Who do you say I am? I believe the answer is this. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. That's a very personal answer to this question. It encompasses who Jesus is. Is this true in your life today? Lord, you are my Savior. The fact is, there are times, I have to be honest, there was a time that I thought my Savior was my mom. I thought my Savior was myself. I thought my Savior was my career. For as long as I'm working here, I'll be okay. But it comes to a point, really, in all our lives that we will figure this out, that nobody can save us but Jesus. And the pandemic has made us realize that. Everything is fleeting. We don't have control. Jesus is the Lord and Savior of our lives. A personal revelation from God, the Bible says. He says, blessed, you're blessed, he said to Peter. You're blessed, why? Because this was not revealed to you by people or your dad, but only through a revelation of God. And so when we learn who Jesus really is as the Savior of our lives, I want you to know this, this truly is a life that is blessed. If you read verse 17, the Bible says, and Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. To experience a blessed life is to receive a revelation from the Father. That's how we will really live a blessed life. I like that song that Tim sang a while ago. I am alive. You made my heart brand new. Remember that? I was observing. You were all reading the lyrics. Most of you were singing to it. I am alive. You've made this heart brand new. I hope you know that declaring that to God is great, but you can actually sing that and declare it to someone else. We can actually be saying, I am alive because of you, my wife. I am alive because of you, my work. To be really alive is to have a revelation of God, from God. And this is the revelation that we all need Jesus. Amen? I want to say this. There's good news. We might not be able to know Jesus fully yet. True, right? May nire reveal pa sa atin si Lord. As we go through our devotion daily, God is revealing who He is more and more. But there's good news. Even though God has not fully revealed Himself, in your life yet, He will still fully be Jesus to you. Gets niyo ba yun? Alam mo, marami akong kaibigan, no? yung ang dami kong nadidiscover sa kanya. Kasi hindi niya sinishare. For example, no, mayroong kilala na, ay, tagal ko ng katrabaho, way back in Halls him. And then, during a party, he all of a sudden just got the mic and said, is it okay I play the piano? Sabi ko, okay. Some of us have been friends with him for six years, some 20 years. And then, nag piano. Meron pala siyang talent na ganun. When he hears, he is able to play. What do you call that? Namatayan. Okay. Widow, di ba? Yung parang, ko ano marinig niya. Natu- yun yung sabi ko, wow, kaling naman nun. And so after that, I approached him. Sabi ko, grabe, Mons. Meron ka palang ganyang skill? Di ko alam. Sabi niya, wala namang opportunity to show. You know, I made this, I, it made me realize yesterday when I was preparing for this message that God is waiting for an opportunity to show who He really is in your life. But it doesn't mean He is fully Jesus today in your life. Even though we only have a 10% grasp of who Jesus is, He is still fully Jesus for you. 
And that's why we can boldly say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Alam nyo, no? one of the Bible verses that I hold on to when I counsel people, it says, the heart is the most deceitful of all. Kaya tayong bulahin ang mga puso natin. But only God knows what is really happening in our hearts. And I'd rather trust someone who really knows than myself. In daming times, I've made so many decisions. Why? Kasi feeling ko, eh, ito na. Ano, meron bang gano'n? Yung, tingnan niyo, yung, yung na-inlaw, eh, ito na. Alam mo yun, yung lahat na lang, she's the one, yan. Puti na lang nung dinalan ni Lord si Pam, alam ko na agad. No? First time, I saw, ay, mapapakasalan ko talaga to. She's the one. Look at the person to your right. Look at the person to your left. Wala, no? Wala dyan, no? Walang the one. To experience a blessed life is to receive a revelation of God. And God will always be fully Jesus for you. It's not a limited version. Always a full access one. And so when the disciples learned who Jesus really is now, a revelation from the Lord, now they have answered, they've answered this question the right way. Jesus was excited because of this. And so what did he do? He now focuses on the conversation from the revelation to who they are. Verse 18, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He says, on this rock I will build my church. I hope by now, and I know you've been hearing this ever since we started the series Stable and Sure, we've been talking about the cornerstone and the people of God. By now you know that the church is not a structure. It's not a four-walled, high-ceiling structure. It's not something that has a sanctuary. A church is a people of God, and that is you and me. This is what Jesus was building. It didn't matter where they met. It mattered that they met as people of God. A community of believers following Jesus. And it comes from the word ecclesia. Can you say that with me? Ecclesia. It actually means a body of believers whom God calls out from the world and into his eternal kingdom. It's a combination of two words that means to be called, tinawag tayo, and not only that, out from and out to. Not only are we called, but we are called out from and out to. People are called from somewhere and brought somewhere else. Called out is to be, for us, called out from this world and now to belong in the kingdom of God. Called out from darkness and now called out into light. Uh, when I was growing up, I loved this game. I don't know if you know this game. We used to play in school, Heaven, Earth, and Hell. Nalala ba yung game na yun when you were small? In our school, we call it heaven, earth, and hell. So I was asking, alam niyo ba yun sa VG ko? Alam niyo yung heaven, earth, and hell? Hindi. In our school, that's what we call it, heaven, earth, and hell. So niya, ah, yeah, langit, lupa, imperno. If you remember that game, di ba? May ano pa yun, di ba? Parang, parang kulto, di ba? Kina, langit, lupa, imperno. Anyway. And so you would sing that. You would chant that. And then, you would have to go to a higher place. Kung na-touch ka nung taya, impyerno ka. So, ang taya laging si Satanas. <laughs> Buti na lang, never ako naging taya. Anyway. What? <laughs> Ba't ko ba iniisip yun? Wala lang. You know, that game would actually show us, um, you know, going to higher ground when we need it. Di ba ganun yun? Ayun na, ayun na, Pataas na ako. Yeah. You know, we can't live our lives just like that game. Because God said we are already called out and stay there. The problem is we can't grow in the Lord and be built together if we are only Christians on a Sunday and go up and go down on a Monday to Saturday. We are already called out. We're not allowed to play that game anymore. We have to always stay there 
because we are already called out to be in the kingdom of God. It's not a game that we have to play. That we go back. Okay naman dito eh. Okay naman sa mundo. You have to realize, may, ka, may magtataya sa'yo. And you don't want to be in hell for that. Tap the person to your right. Sabi mo, taya. Mm. Hindi, wala ka sa impyerno. Huwag ka magalala. God can't build us up if we are Sunday Christians only. God called us out already from that life. And I hope you know the desire of God is always for the best of us. Mahirap sumunod kay Lord. Yes? Mahirap sumunod kay Lord. Yes? Yes. For those na hindi sumunod, Lord, paramdam mo ang pagmamahal mo sa kanila. Mahirap sumunod kay Lord. But you have to understand, He will always want the best for you. God called us out of sin to live in righteousness. And so there's that different life. And so as God tells these men, His disciples, that you are being built up as a church, this is what we talked about last week, He can only do that if we remain in His kingdom. And He says, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's just talk about that for a while. You know, the pandemic has made things really difficult for all of us. I know it's difficult even to be a devoted Christ follower. I've heard feedback from a lot of people that it feels like there was a pause in their faith. Yes, they go to God, but it seems like it's dry, parang di nila nalirinig si Lord. And that is challenging, I know. And so for Christians, and for you to listen to this text and say, Lord, you're building us up as a church. Wow, is that even really possible at this time? Lord, di mo ba naintindihan? Pandemic to, pwedeng tsaka I like that reminder. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I want you to know, Jesus has never stopped building his church. It's all part of what God is doing in our lives. He is continually building us up. If hell can't stop that, who can? And so the question is, which side do we want to be in? We are made to be built up victoriously. Look at the person to right. Sabi mo sa kanya, be built up victoriously. haba daw eh. Hmm. God will continue to build His church that nobody can stop. And so this is my second point. You have to understand, as the people of God, as the church, God is building us up. Why? Because we are meant to be the victorious church. This can be real in our lives. Pwedeng maging totoo to sa mga buhay natin. We can live victoriously. We can live victoriously, guys. We can actually stop living our lives as if we are defeated. And I know sometimes we feel like that. I know sometimes it feels like, Lord, will this even get better? I want to tell you, yesterday, I felt like I was defeated. For a moment in time. For just a bit. I actually accepted the fact na parang, baka ganito na lang talaga, Lord. But I had to remind myself, we are a victorious people of God. And it's not because of what we can do, but it's about what God can do and has done. This is our reality. We are people of God, and we can be victorious in our lives. I want to share with you a story of um, a past D-Day experience. I was part of the D-Day. I had my victory group there. There was a season that I was leading. I'm not sure if Alvin was already there. I believe it was 2014 or 15. We were a group of men. And so the opening question, the warm-up question that I asked, yeah, hindi pa yan, the warm, that's uh, the new, I'll show that later. The warm-up question that I asked was, what's your struggles today? Yeah. What have, what's your struggle? Um, nung 2014, di pa ako marunong english eh. So, Basta tinanong ko, anong problema nyo? Ganun, no? What's your challenges? What's your struggles? And someone said, grabe yung traffic. Mainit ulo ko lagi. 
Ayoko na ng ganun. And then somebody said, patience, kulang ako sa patience eh. Kasi sa office, lagi nila ako, feeling ko talaga lagi ako masungit sa bahay. Ganun. Yung isa, sabi niya, yung relationship ko, love life. Tagal. Ganun, ganun. After all they said, it was almost all different from each other. I had to say one thing. Do you want to know my challenge? Do you want to know my struggle? Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Hindi, I was talking to them. Yeah. So, nalito lang ako. Okay. And sabi ko, you want to know my struggle? This is my struggle. I'm struggling with temptation. Purity is a battle for me, lately. You want to know what they said? One said, actually, ako rin, nahihilang ako sabihin eh. And then the other said, actually, ako yan, yan naman talaga number one kong problema, hindi ko lang masabi. And then the other said, oh, naiya talaga ako, pero gusto ko lang ka talaga sabihin eh, pero naiya ako eh. You know what I realized? We were all battling the same struggle. But because it was put in the light, I believe there was victory that day. God is building His church up. You want to live a victorious life? Yes or no? You want to live a victorious life? Yes or no? Yes. Don't do life alone. Jesus was talking about building us up together. Christianity was never meant to be done alone. Kailangan natin ng kausap. Kailangan natin ng encouragement. Kailangan natin ng prayers. And we are also called to do the same. Just right before we, I preached, I had a good morning today. It was good. But I got encouraged when Alvin prayed for me a while ago. And then Pastor Josh prayed for me a while ago. It was almost the same prayer. And I know I have a mission to preach something. We are a victorious church. But we have to do it together. Tell the person to your right, we are better together. Uh, tell the person to your left, hindi ko na alam. So, mamaya. I like the message version. It says, I will put together my church. It is God who is putting us together. I want to say this. There are people in your life, especially in church community, maybe feeling mo, minsan, di mo feel. Ang kulit eh. Parang lahat na lang, pinakikialaman. Maybe some people in your life, parang laging ano yung, hindi, okay yan, si Lord. Totoo ba? Lagi nalang siyang positive? Parang si Chinky? Parang ganon? <laughs> diba? Yung, there are people that you will get irritated with. There are people that you will actually don't want to reply to all the time in church community. But I want you to know this. God sent them in your life. There will come a time you will be thankful for that. And there will come a time that you will be like that to others. We are being built up together. And so if there's a song that we should sing as a church, it's this. We are the champions, my friends. We'll keep on fighting till the end. Amen? Said the queen. And so the last part of this is, as we answer the question, who is Jesus? He is my Lord the Christ, my Savior. Second question is, what is the church we are? The victorious church. We, it is us. It's not a structure. And so what is a church called to do? Its purpose. The word ecclesia, as I've mentioned a while ago, has two faces. It says, has an identity, what it is, and has a mission, what it does. It should not stop with who we are. There is a purpose for who we are called to be. Verse 19, it says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We have the keys for people to get into heaven. We have the key for them to be able to walk in the truth of God. Yesterday, I spent the entire half day. My mom requested me and Pam to be with her. We were, so they fixed their house. Now, we have to bring back all the stuff from the storage to my mom's place. So they've been renting a storage mart. Ang dami pa lang ganun, no? Parang you rent a storage monthly, depending on the size, and bring, and 
it'll just pay, they'll make sure na malinis yun, it's nice, it's good. Um, so, it was the last day of the storage yesterday, so we had to bring everything out. But when we set up that storage, one key was with me and one key was with my sister. So we had two keys that would unlock one gate to that storage. We were able to call out one um, elf, grabe, ng trash. <laughs> Nung bumalik sa bahay, na-realize na, ah, oh, dapat yata hindi na ito natin stinorage, tinapo na lang ito lahat. Parang gano'n, no? But anyway, the reason why I'm talking about this storage and the key is the limitation of that key for me and my sister was proximity. They live in Kainta. And I was living nearer, malapit sa C5 yung storage. And so who will open the gate? It's the one who has the key closest to the gate. If you really think about it, for people who don't know Jesus, a church will really thrive when a lot of people have keys. We don't need to, Uy, ikaw na, ikaw naman gano'n dyan, kasi hindi ko alam gano'n. I want you to know and live out this truth. We are given the keys to the kingdom of God. And I hope you use that key once in a while. We have the ability to open the gates where people will really receive the life in the kingdom. We have direct access to the Lord. And this is the reality. Not everyone has that. Leadership 113, we had our graduation yesterday. And these are the graduates. I think we have a picture there. Meron ba tayong picture dyan? Of our leadership. Yeah. Can we give them a round of applause? Yeah, man, no? Leadership 113 is our 10-month uh, school um, as we develop leaders that will co-labor with us. And so because they have fulfilled the 10, year, 10, 10 years, 10 months, we have given them a very prestigious plaque. You <laughs> Yeah. So they frame na yan sa mga bahay nila. And they actually, there are so many stories that we want to hear from these men and women. Uh, we pray that we'll, they will have their testimony here and, you know, just speak of what God is doing. But I ask Lou for some pictures of these leaders leading our tables in Discipleship Day. You have to understand, the day was, uh, when we launched it last week, there were so many new people. And I actually was able to talk to six people who did not know that they went inside the church. Grabe! It was a post from Jason. Sabi niya, oh, I like this guy. I'll go. It's free. And I will sit down and learn. And we have um, these Leadership 113 students taking that role and saying, okay, I got this table even though I don't know them, even though I am not sure what to say, but I will show up and lead these people. And that's, for me, developing people who can access keys. I'm not saying that you need to go through Leadership 113. I'm saying that we can all be part of what God is doing. Lahat naman tayo may problema, right? Raise your hand if you're going through a challenge today. Higher, pag sobrang laki. Lord, you hindi nakataas ang kamay. We all are going through challenging times in our lives. This is reality. But know this, you have a Savior and a Lord that you can still be a blessing to others. I want to say this, this leadership batch, a lot of them are going through a lot. <laughs> Kung alam niya lang. But still, God can use us. Why? Because God is building us up to be a people for a mission. Remember this, the keys that we are standing on, the kingdom of God says, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, at the end, it says, which is the church. This is the description of the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. We are living with the truth in our hands and in our lives. And so when you invite people, when you preach the gospel, know this, you are revealing truth that they need to hear. Why? Because that only the truth will set them free. A lot of people are in chains, in bondage, and you have the key the truth from God. And so this is our mission, our purpose. We are called to lead people to Jesus. This is the purpose of the church. We are called to lead people 
to Jesus. Who do you say I am? Jesus asks. We can say, Lord, you are my Savior and Lord. And so if there's one thing about the church, when we know who Jesus is, it's this. We are the church of Jesus and for Jesus. Can we bow down our heads? I just want to pray. Lord, thank you that this question we will be able to answer today. As we have heard your word, thank you, Lord, for asking us once again, who do you say I am? Sino ba ako for you? The question that we all need to answer. And I want you to hear this from me. God wants to reveal this truth to you. That Jesus is the son of the living God. As you close your eyes, I want you to hear this. If this is your first time to hear who Jesus really is. Acts 4 verse 11 it says, this is Jesus, the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And in verse 12, he says, and there is a salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no, there is salvation in no one else but in Jesus. So if you want to experience Jesus today for who he really is, it starts with knowing that he is your Savior. Lord, thank you that you are a God who is concerned not only for us today, but for our tomorrow. And with that, Lord, we just acknowledge what you are doing in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, we pray that we will get this, that you are our Lord and Savior. Church, let that be a personal declaration. Say that. Lord, you are my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to understand what church really is. The church is life together for you and with you. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us the church is not just about us but it's about reaching to a world that needs you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done on the cross. Thank you, Lord, that we are alive because of you. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us that we no longer live in darkness, and now we live in your light, that this is not a, something that we can manufacture in our minds and in our hearts. This is only a revelation from the Father. And so allow us to live our lives not only that is pleasing for you, Lord, a life that is free, a life that lives in the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are doing your work. Allow us, Lord, to respond in worship today. Allow us to sing once again who you are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, hi guys! Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our Victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us. Whatever, just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. God bless you.